Once upon a time, on the far-off planet Jupiter, lived two strange creatures. Strange in looks, but with a wisdom far greater than our own. Well, you can't expect them perfect. Each day, they searched the universe for signs of intelligent life. But alas, they found none. Instead, they settled for the planet Earth. Now, on this planet lived a young inventor by the name of Ernest P. Duckweather. He invented a television set unlike any ever known before. For on this set, he was able to tune in the planet Jupiter. The trouble was that no one believed him. Not even when his friends from outer space sent down a visitor to Earth. Major, it's wonderful how the Earthlings have found such a neat new way to eat fine chocolate. You refer to M&M's candies, of course. Sure, the delicious milk chocolate with a thin sugar shell that melts in your mouth, not on your fingers. M&M's candies, mmm, mmm, the chocolate treat that's neat to eat. There's just no other chocolate that tastes so good as the wonderful old-fashioned milk chocolate in M&M's candies. Little boy blue, come blow your horn Where M&M's candies are sold The chocolate treat that's neat to eat A favorite of young and old <laughs> Ernest Hmm? Penny for your thoughts I've just been thinking about you and me, Captain Oh? What about you and me? Well, we've known each other for such a long time. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if one day you and me were... <laughs> this is going to sound silly to you, Captain. Oh, no, not at all. One day you and me were walking down the aisle of... Yes? Go on. The first rocket ship to outer space. That'd be real cozy. Yeah. Ernest. Hmm? What time is it? Seven o'clock. Thanks. You will. Eleven, Eleven o'clock? <gasps> Go Ooh. away! And here he is, your friend and mine, Professor Dexter Spiegelmacher. Today we continue our series of lectures which prove that money isn't everything. Are you overthrown at your local bank? When you shake your pocket, do you hear nothing but keys rattling? Is the only kind of lettuce you got the kind that goes in sandwiches? Well, you don't know how lucky you are. In fact, I don't know how lucky you are. Well, I'm not talking about you ain't even lucky. That is, not until you have tried the Spiegelmacher system for feeling root without loot. Now, the first thing you do is take a nice long walk in the park. Then you take a deep, deep breath and smell the fresh country air. Ah, good, no? Then you look around at all the birds and the bees and the flowers. You know what happens to your money problem? You still got them. And what did you expect? Mere Duck just... weather. Anyway, the turn that thing off. Wait oh, just a minute, Dad. Not don't just a minute off. now. And but we were just... I said turn it off. Without Fine way to run a business. Radio program. Ah. I don't think you're being very fair about this, Dad. Neither does Ernest. Do you, Ernest? Well, I... You see? Ernest agrees with me. Oh, he does, does he? Uh, well, not exactly. Well, if Ernest is so smart, perhaps Ernest will tell me how listening to a radio program will bring money into the store. But that's just the point, Dad. According to Professor Spiegelmacher, well, you don't need money to be happy. Don't need money? Oh, <laughs> what nonsense. You can feel good without loot. I can feel what without who? Good without money, Dad. Huh? Well, that's Professor Spiegelmacher's theory. And it isn't nonsense. 
Why, millions of people listen to him every day. Yeah, well, let him run his business, and I'll run mine my way. But, Daddy... Now, that's enough, Catherine. If Professor uh, uh, Watts' name means so much to you, you can listen to him at home. All right, I will. Come on, Ernest. Duckweather? Not you. <laughs> Professor Spiegeldorfer. <laughs> Professor Spiegelmacher, sir. Well, what are you standing there for? Go on downstairs and clean out that cellar. Yes, sir, Mr. Frisbee. Don't need money. <laughs> I tell you, I shall faint, Mr. Latham. I shall positively faint. Oh, why does he say you have to have that? I can assure you that I've the trouble, Mrs. Clancy. Oh, too much. Too much to talk about. Well, if I can be of any assistance, oh, you'll only make matters worse. What are you now, 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 gentlemen, let's not change it. I will try to make the money. Quiet! Quiet. Now, if either of you gentlemen have the slightest desire to assist me, you might at least allow me to explain my predicament. Well, I, uh, I apologize for Latham's bad manners. Why, you, Mr. Latham? Continue, Mrs. Clandish. <laughs> Mr. Frisbee, you are looking on the hollow shell of a formerly healthy woman. When I initiated the cultural improvement program for the town of Clayville, I was prepared to make great sacrifices on my well-being. Yes. But never did I think it would come to this. Well, what is it? Well, you are aware of the lecture to be held in the high school auditorium this evening? Well, I should be. I, I sold five books of tickets for you. <laughs> Not for me, Mr. Frisbee. No. For the cultural improvement of Clayville. Oh, Millicent, I sold seven. Yes, yes, you did, Mr. Latham. Well, at any rate, I have just been informed that Mr. Farquhar, who was to be our guest speaker, came down today with a bad case of measles. Oh, that's awful. Dreadful. Well, is it any wonder I've wasted away to mere nothingness? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, Millicent, as I told you, I'd be only too happy to get a replacement for you. You? Why, what speakers do you know? Mm, I suppose you never heard of Dr. Mengali, the memory expert. Oh, that quack? Oh, I suppose you can do better. Oh, 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 oh. without half trying. Yeah. Mrs. Clandish, how would you like President Carter of the university? Mm -hmm. Major Pillory of Clayville. Congressman Frohley. Senator Pike. Governor Tim. Admiral Drome. Uh, Professor Spiegelmacher. Professor Spiegelmacher? Uh, yes. Did you say Professor Spiegelmacher? Well, yes, I, I think I did. Why, uh, have you ever heard of him? Have I ever heard of him? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't miss his program for the world. Oh, the simple beauty of his beliefs, the poetry of his words, money isn't everything. You can feel good without loot. Uh, Mr. Frisbee, I'm surprised at you. Uh, I had no idea you had such exquisite taste. Oh, yeah. oh, can you actually get him for us? Uh, well... Uh, yeah, Frisbee. Can you actually get him for us? Well, well, well of course I can. Why? Professor Spiegelmacher and I are old friends. We, uh, well, we went to Heidelberg together. Uh, uh, that is, uh, the professor went first. I, I took the correspondence course. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful piece of luck. Yeah. To think that we have a friend of the professor's living right here in Clayville. <laughs> oh, Mr. Frisbee, can I count on you to get in touch with the professor and have him at the lecture hall tonight at nine? You certainly can. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, this is so exciting. Uh, come, Mr. Latham, we've bunting to uh, hang. Uh, Mrs. Clandy. Yes? Uh, uh, just in case he should ask, uh, how much is the professor being paid for this lecture? Oh, well, now let's see. We've already spent $15 on the door prize, and that would leave us... Come now, Frisbee. Since you and the professor are such old friends, Surely you can get him to donate his services free of charge? Huh? Why, that's an excellent idea, uh, Mr. Well, now, look, I, I... now, you can't fool me, Horatio. <laughs> I'll bet you were planning to do that all along now, weren't you? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I thought so, you naughty boy. <laughs> well, goodbye now. Goodbye. See you at the lecture tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Duck 
Weather? Yes, sir? My boy, I have a little job for you. promises, and as usual, I gotta keep it. Well, I have to find the professor right away. Just a minute. I'll look through my telescope. What a voice. And there he is, Mr. Duckworthy. He just walked into the park. Which park? Can you tell? I don't know the name of it. But there's a great big statue right in the middle. It's squirting water through its ears. Oh, Franklin Park. That's in the city uh, 20 miles from here. See, I could make that in about a half hour on the bus. Well, I, I gotta hurry, Johnny. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Mr. Duckworth. Have a nice trip. Professor Spiegelmacher? Shh. I concentrate. Uh, why don't you just twist that? Uh... Uh, please. When Spiegelmacher tackles a problem, he don't ask no help from nobody. I think I try a new dimension here. You see, we... Ugh, it's impossible. What are they trying to do? Make crazy lunatics from the public? But don't worry, I bring you back to that magic store and I get my money uh, back. Uh, Professor, can I see that for a minute? So you want to buy it, maybe? Uh, no, just try. <laughs> you want to try it? You think you can work something that stumps Spiegelmacher, huh? <laughs> Go ahead, try. He thinks he can do something, but the great brain from Spiegelmacher they... How did you do that? With the relativity of a calculus? <laughs> well, it was nothing, Professor. I just finished something you started. My boy, you are genius. And I'm a genius, too. Two geniuses. <laughs> I still bring you back and get my quarterback. Uh, uh, just a minute, Professor. Yeah? How'd you like to come to Clayville tonight and give a lecture at the high school auditorium? Lecture, huh? Mm-hmm. What do you want me to lecture on? You know, uh, money isn't everything. <laughs> That's right, my boy. You take nice long walks in the park. You smell the fresh country air. Say, if I come give that lecture, you show me how to work that puzzle? I'll show you. Well, I always say a fair piece of change. That's no highway robbery. <laughs> Dad, look! I got you, Mr. Frisbee! Oh, Ernie! Catherine, Mr. Frisbee, this is <gasps> Professor Spiegelmacher. How do you do, Professor? Professor Spiegelmacher, this is indeed a privilege, sir. Allow me, on behalf of the entire township of Clayville, uh, to please. Accept... <laughs> I make the speeches. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> of course. Well, I guess it, well, we'd better be going, eh? Uh, da, 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 da. First, I have to sort out the slides for the lecture. <laughs> Excuse me. How long is this going to take him? Well, uh, I don't know. Oh, well, then Catherine and I better run over and tell Mrs. Clandy she's here. Now, you bring him over there as soon as he's through, you understand? Okay. Oh, and Duckweather, I'm very proud of you for this, my boy. And starting tomorrow, I'm promoting you to general manager in charge of maintenance and sales. <gasps> Oh, will this mean a raise, Mr. Frisbee? Yeah, a raise. Well, well, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Come along, Catherine. Oh, Ernie. 
Need your help? Yeah, can you let me have five till next Wednesday? <laughs> what I'm talking about. The slide, please. <laughs> Here, slide number one. Slide number two. Slide three. And slide four. There we are. Okay, now, we ready to go. I'll carry this for you, Professor. Uh, sehr good, thank you. Oh, uh, before we go, just one little question, please. Oh, what's that, Professor? Uh, do I get my thousand dollars before or the after the lecture? You what? Uh, my thousand dollars. The standard lecture fee. Thousand dollars? What are you worried about, my boy? Money is not everything. <laughs> Funny how many things happen by accident. Like the time I discovered life on Jupiter, and like many of you grown-ups discovered M&M's candies. Probably you bought some for the children because they're so neat to eat. They melt in your mouth, not on your fingers. Then you took a nibble. Surprised, weren't you? <clears throat> Hard to believe these little candies with the thin, crisp sugar shells and rich chocolate centers could taste so wonderfully good. Mmm. You just can't beat the delicious taste of M&M's candies, made from the finest, purest, old-fashioned milk chocolate money can buy. Easy to serve, easy to eat. The entire family will enjoy this delightfully different chocolate treat. You know, you can get M&M's candies by the scoopful, like this, with a large M on each and every M&M's candy. Or in either the handy five-cent size or the family package with the large M&M's on the front. You never tasted anything so good. But, Professor, we haven't got a thousand dollars. No thousand dollars? You mean you brought me all the way down here for nothing? Well, I, I thought you well, said... Well, that's very serious, my boy. That's very serious. You can't expect a lecture without a fee. But, Professor, you said if I showed you how to work that puzzle... Uh, and that was just a bonus. But, but all those people down at the high school just waiting. You can't. My boy, there's an old Spiegelmacher slogan for occasions like this. No riches, no spitches. Professor. Ooh. Ooh, I'm in trouble, fellas. What's wrong, Mr. Duckweather? Couldn't you find the professor? Yeah, I found him okay. I also found out that he charged you a thousand dollars to say that money wasn't everything. You mean he's rash for cash and hollers for dollars? I mean he don't feel goot without loot. Creeping comments. What a disappointment. Johnny, what are we going to do? All those people down at the high school out of town, they're just waiting right now. Well, why don't you give the lecture, Mr. Duckweather? Me? You believe that money isn't everything, don't you? Well, yeah, I know. And the professor never did believe it himself. Don't you see? You're really more of an expert than he is. Well, I know, Johnny, but it... Ooh, it sounds awful risky to me. Just do as we tell you, Mr. Duckweather. You can't go wrong. <laughs> You'd better run down to the store and see what's happening. All right, Dad. Oh, hey, Johnny. Hmm? I just thought of something. I gotta have somebody help me with these slides here. Oh, what do you mean? Well, somebody's gotta put on the slides while I do the talking. That's what I was gonna do for uh, the professor. And that sounds like a job for a robot. Which robot did you have in mind? <laughs> Not you, Major Domo. I was talking about Reject, the factory rejected robot. That's better. Well, you think Reject could do it? Of course. There's nothing to it. Okay, then, Johnny. You tell him to meet me backstage at the high school auditorium, will you? All right. I'd better get Reject. Uh, Good luck, Mr. Duckweather. Thanks very much, Johnny.
are you ready for your flight to Earth, reject? TV beam focused, super jet power on. Space belts fastened. Can you hear? Reject. Reject, where are you? Oh, hi, Reject. Look. Now, look, this is a slide projector right here. I'm going to show you what I want you to do. You put the slides right in here, one by one on this side. Push it through like that, and that brings the picture up. You understand that? Okay. I'm going to be right out here on stage, on the other side of the curtain, where you'll be able to hear me. When I call for the next slide, you change slides. Here they are, right here in this box. There's a whole bunch of them, but we're only using numbers one, two, three, and four. In that order. Okay? Reject. Wish me luck. that every heart among you is beating anxiously for the arrival of Professor Spiegelmarker. However, since the good professor has obviously been delayed, I ask you to bear with me until... Ladies and gentlemen, put your minds at ease, for here he is, your friend and mine, Professor Spiegelmarker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we prove that money isn't everything. The pictures. And so, uh, while Sid is ready with the slides, we can begin. Once upon a time in my travels, I met a young lady. She was a lovely young creature. And she was crazy about money. And she looked something like this. First slide, please. Ernest? Ernest, are you still here? How do you like that? Somebody stole my clothes and the slides and everything. Well, where's Ernest, Professor? Who's Ernest Professor? I don't know no Ernest Professor. Oh, Ernest, the young man who's going to bring you to the lecture tonight. Ha! No lecture tonight for Spiegelmacher. Do you know what they had the nerve to do to bring me all the way out here and then they tell me they ain't got the money to pay for the lecture? What am I asking for? A thousand dollars? You're darn tootin'. Well, you mean to say you won't go on tonight because Ernest can't pay you a thousand dollars? All right. I settled for seven hundred and fifty, not one penny less. Why, you old hypocrite. Why, after all those speeches about money not being everything, why, you didn't believe a word of them, did you? Now, speeches is one thing, what's in the pocket is another. And to think that I believed in you. All those beautiful words about love and nature, what... Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, listen, I... I you listen am... to me, Professor. There are hundreds of people in that high school tonight waiting to hear you. Honest, decent, hard-working people who believe in you as I once did. Well, maybe it's time somebody told them what a fake you really are, you... You horrible old man! Hey, 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 Bates, Bates! Uh, well, my assistant must be having trouble with the slides. Uh, next slide, please. Apologies to Mrs. Clandish hmm. and her committee. 
I'm sorry to inform you that we have all been the victims of a terrible hoax. It is my purpose now to reveal that hoax and to reveal the unscrupulous man behind it, a man whom I regret to say runs a, a small business in this very community. All of you have come here tonight in good faith, expecting to see and hear the great philosopher of our time, Professor Spiegelmacher, whose doctrine that money isn't everything rings a vibrant note of truth in every honest heart. You have paid your money, my friends, but you have been cheated, cheated by a conniving rascal who falsely claimed that he could get the professor and then wasn't man enough to admit defeat. Instead, this man persuaded his youthful assistant to disguise himself as the professor by putting on a false beard. Knowing these facts, it is my solemn duty as a citizen of Clayville to expose this hoax and the villains behind it. You have finished with this nonsense. We proceed with the lecture. M&M's candies, M&M's candies, M&M's candies. Mr. Domo, Mr. Domo, what's happened to you? Best thing that could happen to anyone, Mr. Duckweather. I just ate some M&M's candies. So good I can't get them out of my memory cylinders. He's right, Mr. D. M&M's candies' own blend of the richest, purest, old-fashioned milk chocolate is the tastiest treat in the whole wide universe. You're both so right. But to make sure you get only genuine M&M's candies, when you buy them by the scoop for like this, be sure you look for the letter M on each and every one. And when you buy them by the package, either this handy five cent size or large family package, make certain the letters M and M's are printed on the front. And remember, M and M's candies are the chocolate treat that's neat to eat. Because M and M's candies melt in your mouth and not on your fingers. Mmm, what a wonderful taste. M&M's candies can't be beat. They're the chocolate treat that's neat to eat. Mothers and dads and children too. Eat M&M's candies. How about you? <laughs> and you should have seen the look on old Latham's face when he tried to pull off the professor's beard. He looked as surprised as a jackrabbit in a Turkish bath. And Mrs. Clantish was pleased as punch. And oh. Mr. Frisbee got all the credit for making the lecture a big success. Uh, didn't you get any credit, Mr. Duckweather? Well, only with Kath and Johnny, but shucks, it's all I care about. <laughs>